So this whole topic is called piecewise functions, but let's look um, generally at what a piecewise defined function is. Right? So if we look, we can remind ourselves that a function is just a rule that determines the output for any given input. Right? Another way we say that is that it's a relationship between two sets of numbers. Um, so that's what a function is, and then there's the specific two sets of numbers. Right? And it just says, hey, if you give me a number in, I have a rule that tells you what number you're going to get out. And the other thing that's special about functions is it's not just any relationship, but in this relationship you can only have one output for every input. That's a requirement for it to be a function. So a piecewise defined function is a function, so it has to be a relationship between two sets of numbers, and it has to have only one output for every given input. But a piecewise defined function, the behavior changes over different sections of the domain. Um, Another way to say this is, uh, another way to say that might be that it has different behaviors or different definitions um, for different sections of the domain. So let's look at some examples, different definitions um, on different sections of the domain. So most of the functions we've looked at have very nice behavior. And so an example of a function, right, could be something like a nice straight line, or even we looked a little bit at parabolas. I keep telling you we're going to get more of those later on. But a piecewise defined function acts differently for different sections of the domain. So maybe it looks like a parabola for this half of the domain, and then a straight line for the rest. You can see those two, they're not symmetric. They don't look the same. Or maybe it's defined as this line for that much of the domain and then for the rest of the domain it's just a straight line. These kind of things are all valid and possible. We're going to learn and talk about step functions. right? These are kind of special piecewise defined functions. All of these things and even honestly the absolute value function. You can see that every one of these has a different behavior for some different section of the domain. If I, I can look at it and see that there's some place on the x where the behavior changes how the function is going to act. So we've been looking at these absolute value functions. And if I graphed this, I would say, OK, uh, 5 times the absolute value of x, it is a vertical stretch of the absolute value function. If I look at this specific example and I wanted to rewrite it as a piecewise function, I would say, is there a place where the behavior changes? And sure enough, if I look right here at the y-axis, uh, I can see, hey, on this side of the domain, when x is less than 0, my slope is decreasing. On this side, when x is greater than 0, my slope is increasing. So sure enough, this is two different behaviors for the same function on different sections of the domain. So what I can do is rewrite this and say, hey, it's basically two different functions. It's one function when x is less than 0 and one function when x is greater than 0. Um, if x is less than 0, I know that this is the opposite of 5 times the number, and when x is greater than 0, it's really just 5 times the number. The only thing you have to be careful of is the way I wrote this. I said, hey, this break is right here at 0, and that's true. But in my definition of the domain right now, I've defined x less than 0, and I've defined x greater than 0, but I have not put in what's the value when x equals 0. So in this case, they both equal 0. The decreasing line goes to 0 and the increasing line, so it doesn't really matter where you put it. You just got to pick one. So here is another example. f of x equals negative 2 times the absolute value of x. 
Again, I'm going to see that this negative sign gives me a reflection and the 2 is a vertical stretch. So it's going to look something like this, right? And at negative 1, it equals uh, negative 2. And at 1, it equals negative 2. So I have this same division in this case at x equals 0. So my piecewise defined function, I'm going to say, hey, it's made up of two different parts. From x is less than 0 and x is greater than 0. And on this section here, when x is less than 0 up to this point, it is equal to twice the number that I put in. If I put in negative 1, I get out negative 2. So it's just twice the number that I put in. If I look at the other side, starting at 0 and moving towards the positive x, it's equal to negative twice, the opposite of twice the number that I put in. I put in 1, I get out negative 2. And again, these two meet at 0, so it doesn't matter which number I put in, but I need to make sure that I remember to define my whole domain in my piecewise function. So I'm going to go ahead and add my equal to sign right there. It doesn't really matter where you put it as long as you make sure it goes in. There are cases where it does matter and you'll have to pay attention to open and closed circles, but for these absolute value functions where they meet, it, it doesn't matter. So here's another example. This time they've given us the function, the piecewise defined function, and they want us to graph it. So I can see here's a function, here's a function. So my domain is split at x equals 2. So if I want to graph this, I have to start by making a plane. And I'm going to go ahead and draw attention to this break. I see that this break is at x equals 2. So I'm going to draw a line through x equals 2 because that's where my behavior is going to change. That's the important part of my graph. So this function, I, my pens aren't working to change color, but this top function tells me all of my behavior to the left side of that line, and this bottom function tells me all my behavior to the right side of that line. Now, the definition acts like it doesn't care that there is a break. Right? It's just defining the function. A lot of the tricks we learned to graph require us to consider intercepts. So I can pretend like the whole line is there as long as I remember at the end this break is the defining point where it changes what I have. So let's look at this first one, x plus 1. Um, I know that my y-intercept is at 1 and then it goes with a slope of 1. So up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. And I can see that the less than or equal to sign is there. So there is actually a solid dot at that point. And I can draw my line through. Now, this line in my imagination can keep going, but I know that it really stops at this break. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop it at that dot. On the other side, where x is greater than 2, I look at this second line. Six, right? My intercept would be right here at 6, and it has a slope of negative 3 over 2. So it goes down 1, 2, 3, and over 2. So I would draw an open circle here. Can't really tell because it covers that same spot. And here, and then this is what the rest of the graph looks like. These two happen to meet at this spot. They are not required to. These ones just do. Okay. But there are two different graphs that have a breaking point right here. If you wanted to, you could, I can't get my pens to work, you could delete this break line. Um, it's really just there to remind me where to change the behavior. Now you notice I started counting at the y-intercept, but I didn't include any of this section of the line when I drew it because that line does not exist to the left of the break point. It only exists on the right side. So let's look at one more example and see how it goes. Okay, I want to graph this. If I look, the first thing I'm going to note is where's my break point. So in this case, my break point is at x equals 1. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw in a dotted line there just to help me remember that that's where my behavior is going to change. If I look at the top, this is to the left, 
right? So this line I want to draw for this part of my domain. X minus 2, so I go down to negative 2. And then my slope is 1, so up 1 over 1. I could keep going, but nothing to the right of this line is going to be included. It's only everything to the left of the line. So I'm only going to draw in that section. Now, the section to the right of my domain is here on the bottom, uh, to the right of my break. The intercept is positive 3. So I could put a faint dot there. I would need that to graph it. And my slope is negative 2, so 1, 2 over 1. This spot is the first one that I would consider for my domain. But I'm going to draw an open circle because it's not an inclusive right there. And then if I did another, I would go 1, 2 over 1. This dot is on my graph. So if I go ahead and connect those, this is what this graph looks like. This is not continuous. There's a hole there. It's OK, though. It's still a function because when x equals 1, the value is right here, and this open circle is not included. Again, I looked at the intercept, and I used the intercept to be able to figure out where to plot my points, but I'm not going to include the intercept on my graph because it's not included in the section of the domain that I'm graphing. So here's an example of working out a, um, problem with these piecewise defined functions. Um, it, the definition of the function is right here. And what we're interested in is when we have 75 bands. So if I'm looking at 75 bands, I would be right here in this section. So a dollar each would give me $75 plus $10 in shipping. So that would be the cost of 75. To order 75 wristbands would cost me $85. This other student is saying, hey, if you order 100, it's actually going to be cheaper. So let's look. If I order over 100 wristbands, the cost of 100, I'm now in a different section of the domain. I'm here at over 100. So let's say I ordered 100 and let's do 102 just to make it easy. If I ordered 102, they're 50 cents each. So that would be 51 dollars but shipping is free so plus zero dollars in shipping so the total cost would be 51. so this isn't a graphing thing at all it's just hey we use these kind of piecewise functions in our thinking all the time it's just an example of that here is another example of using piecewise functions this is how we bill water i know we spent a lot of time looking at this in class but i will post the example here if you want to review it some more and then here is our concept summary. A piecewise function is just a function that's defined differently over different intervals of the domain. And here is one example and a graph. Remember always to look for the break line where the domain changes and to be very, very careful with your um, open and closed inclusive circles.